let's talk some more about the Mark II. Because I was reading through comments on the last video and uh, there were a number of things that I wanted to give some thoughtful responses to. Uh, and there were enough of them that I decided instead of typing out a whole bunch of responses, uh, why not just kind of expand on this blaster and my initial thoughts uh, with a few things that I think maybe I didn't make clear and kind of talking through some of the things that uh, maybe some people had some disagreements with and give you a perspective on how I come to those decisions or, or perspectives, uh, however you want to put it. Uh, the first thing I, I want to kind of specify that I think maybe didn't come across as well as it could have in the video is that I like this blaster. I think it's really cool and really impressive uh, what they've done with this. So don't be mistaken if you came away from the last video thinking that I didn't like this. I actually really rather do. So just to kind of start off with clarifying that. Jumping in here really quick to give a kind of quick TLDR for the first portion. That is, uh, I can like something and still have critiques of it. I like this blaster. I just have things that uh, I think could be better. And I can also enjoy something and be glad I have something while still questioning whether it was worth the price point. Now, this is, uh, in terms of what you get in it, probably a good value. But for how often I will be able to use it, that's why I question as to whether it was worth the $80 for me. And that may not be the case for everyone. Everyone's case is going to be different and personalized to their situation, what they're going to use it for, how often they'll get to use it, all those details. So it's just my perspective. I also want to preface this with, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to dismiss any comments, regardless if someone disagrees, uh, if they're critical or critique something, those give me value. Those are interesting to me in that I get to see someone else's perspective. I, there's no value to me if I just dismiss something that someone says, even if I don't agree with it, unless it's like the most factually incorrect, absurd, you know, obvious thing that it's like, okay, well, this, I can't approach this. But for anything other than that, like there, there's value in having this discussion. And that's part of why I wanted to uh, expand on things because regardless of the comment, I like engaging and being able to get that perspective and understanding from other people as well. So it's not just my own because I'm just one opinion and there's so many more people in this hobby than just one person. In fact, I think one of the reasons I may have come off uh, more harsh in that video is that I had really, really high expectations for this blaster. Uh, so much so that I think I was kind of looking for it to be perfect. And then when the blaster itself was great, but the things that came with it maybe weren't as great. It kind of was disappointing to me. Uh, now, that may or may not be necessarily a fair thing to do to kind of come in with certain expectations. And then when it's not necessarily the blaster itself, but more the accessories that are that are problematic for me, uh, aside from, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the whole aesthetic thing in a bit. Um, but yeah, it felt like they, they spent so much time crafting this into something that it's performs nicely, though it does seem that mine is a little bit lower performing than some of the others. So there may be some variance there, uh, but feels nice, uh, shoots well. Just, it, it's a nice package for a blaster. Uh, aesthetics aside, any of that argument aside. And then the stuff that comes with it, while nice, wasn't as refined. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll talk. I think I was probably more harsh on this, the holster, which when I took a step back and kind of thought about it, like to re-engineer a holster to be uh, ambidextrous, to be able to flip one way to the other, while probably doable, would probably be higher in cost that, you know, probably something they didn't want to have to design, develop, and then get molded as well. So it's probably a cost thing. Um, and they figured that, uh, as pointed out, most people are right-handed, even though my kind of thing is I'm right-handed, but I want my secondary on my left-hand side. 
Uh, so that, I, I guess that's my, that was my frustration with that. But if it does fit where you want it and how you want to draw it, it is a nice inclusion. No denying that. Uh, maybe someone will design a Molly adapter for the belt loop. So if you want to run it on a Molly rig of some kind, you can instead of only being limited to belt loops. Something I absolutely stand by though is that this mag holder or speed loader holder is not as good as it could have been. Um, I, the problem with this just it's I'm not the only one that experienced it. It's just such a bummer that they didn't take a little bit of extra time uh, to design this and do it in a way that allowed you to reload because Sure, maybe not everyone's going to, but if you make it look like the option is there, why not make it so you can actually do it? It's such a bummer to me because I really like these speed loaders. It is such a fun element. It's honestly one of the most fun things I've found in this hobby in terms of like new blasters in a while and it, it's not even shooting the blaster it's a mechanism to allow you to shoot the blaster but i just really like how they had done it it was really satisfying and really well done and that's again elevating something to a high level and then having something that doesn't quite meet that high level uh makes it seem even less impressive than it may be. And even if you run these upside down, you can't reload them. Uh, because sure, you can put a dart in, but if I find a dart, I'll put one dart in, I'll put a second dart in, and I'm running around doing a thing, and my darts are not the way they should be. Uh, because there's no follower holding them in place. Uh, can I pull these out? Can I? Okay, okay, cool. Uh, so that's that's the bummer for me, is allowing that follower to freely move as it should would open up more possibilities for this piece of accessory, which would have been great. Again, glad they, they included it. I just wish they would have spent a little bit more time. And yes, these may seem like nitpicky things, but for a line you're going to call your pro line, I think that warrants elevated expectations because for the blaster and the speed loader themselves, they did a fantastic job. It's just the accoutrement, the, the accessories, the extra stuff that, that hasn't quite stacked up. Now, the thing that probably popped up the most, and that is my um, concern over the shape of the blaster, of it being very firearm-like. Uh, there's a variety of different comments about why it's not a problem. And for me, I have to come at this from the perspective of an organizer. I have hosted games in the past and I will host games in the future. And for me, the safety of the people playing is important. That's why I pay for insurance for events. So if something happens, we have that. And I'm not going to go through every single comment and, and things like that and kind of like, I don't want to single anyone out or make it feel like that because no, this again, I just want to have a conversation and share some expanded thoughts on how I got to my perspective and, and acknowledge other people's perspective and kind of have that back and forth. Um, color, it being brightly colored, Maybe 10 years ago, that was more of a, of a, a safer kind of thing, but it's scary easy to find brightly colored real steel firearms now. Like it's, it's becoming more and more common. So that doesn't immediately negate something when you can find things that have a similar silhouette and are brightly colored as well. Um, and there are handguns with larger back ends and, and things, you know, may not be 100% this exact form factor, but similar enough that someone that is not uh, a gun enthusiast or something may see it, be concerned, make a call. And for me, that risk, sure, maybe 99% of the time it's fine, but I don't like rolling the dice on that other percentage. Um, and again, that's 
just me. I'm looking at this from a, a game host and organizer's perspective. I want everyone to be as safe as possible. Um, you never know what's going to happen when you take things out of your hands and put them into someone else's that you don't know. So I have to try and look at those perspectives and try to mitigate things as best as I can. And that's why things like this are concerning. We have worker kits that emulate, uh, you know, real steel guns. And I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of those either, to be quite honest. Um, they have their place in, in, you know, again, LARP type stuff, cosplay stuff. And they can be cool display builds and aesthetic stuff. But if you try and make something look like a firearm, I tend to err on the side of not the biggest fan of that. Also, the fact that this is being sold at Target, a big box store, worker kits are not. Worker kits are not, you know, the most easily accessible to any person just browsing, you know, Target or Walmart or, or things like that. Um, so that's, again, kind of just my perspective on this. I totally understand that not everyone's gonna agree. A lot of people are going to disagree and that's the way it is unfortunately i have my perspective on this and uh a little bit of an expanded thoughts on how i come to that and i just i felt it was important to share rather than just leaving a few comments and response where people may not see it uh, because there was enough of a response that i felt it warranted a bit of a discussion so uh, i hope you can appreciate that and and the perspective from which I come from and the understanding that I, I may not have presented things the best in terms of how much I actually like this blaster in the, the first impressions video. I'll own that completely. Uh, like I said, I, I had such high expectations that I was, I was more bummed when certain things let me down than I may have been for other blasters. But I think it's a good blaster. I like it. I'm glad I have one. Uh, so just to put that to rest. Also, one last thing to touch on here is that, you know, at a private field, totally awesome. Definitely will bring this blaster and we'll have fun using it. Um, unfortunately, private fields are not an option for a lot of players. This hobby has grown through public games and that freely accessible area is kind of an integral part of this hobby currently. Now, at some point in the future, maybe it'll change, but I don't see that being anytime soon because that adds a lot of cost to things. And this hobby being affordable is one of the great entry points for a lot of people. So if you start to push things to only be in, in you know, closed off private fields, then that may change some things for some people. And just that's one more thing to consider. And when you put something else into someone else's hands, things can happen that are unexpected. Now, if you get someone that sees the the blaster, thinks it's a gun, freaks out, makes a call, uh, and say nothing absolutely terrible happens initially, but say it happens enough in one area where then all of a sudden, locally, legislation starts to be drafted to limit the amount of uh you know blaster battles can happen because they're starting to look very military and gun-like and for safety reasons they're going to ban certain things or you know things can happen and i don't want to be a catalyst for that now yes you can argue that may be an extreme case or, or something like that but something's a factor that's just that's how my brain works I look at those worst case potential scenarios and try to think of, you know, is it worth it? And that's, again, you can argue against it or for it, and that's just, that's just where I'm at. I think that's all that was uh, coming to mind for now. If I think of something else while I'm cutting this together, I'll drop in some more right here. But otherwise, thank you to everyone for commenting. Uh, whether you agreed with something or not, I, I appreciate it. I like hearing people's thoughts and perspective. Again, I'm just going to keep reinforcing that sentiment. So even if it's a critique or a disagreement or something, post it. That's how things improve or change or understandings are met. Sometimes maybe I'd be wrong. Sometimes someone else is wrong. Sometimes it's somewhere in the middle and you won't know if all you do is surround 
your own perspective with the same. That's just 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 my thought. I don't know. Again, let me know if I uh, think something I said is off or uh, what your thoughts generally are on this. I'm not planning on doing, you know, this is a regular thing to respond to things, but there was enough uh, in the last video that I thought it was worth it, may as well. It, it felt better than just writing comments back on this one. So that's it. That's enough out of me. Thank you for watching through this. I'll see you all next time.